There are hundreds of other viruses out there, some more contagious than others, like the tequila virus, or the suicide virus, or the Hellraiser virus. It's written by a virus run gang called Falcon Schism, smart kids into sick methods, and their motto is hard at work to make your life a living hell. An inner London home at breakfast time where American businessman Bart Hutchinson is getting his children ready for school. His son and daughter are Bart's job in the morning, but once they're off to school, he runs his U.S.-based property business from an office upstairs. Lauren, would you like some melon? Working from home allows Bart to spend time with his children. Central London rents are among the highest in the world. So having an office in the home keeps his costs from spiraling out of control. But the home office also means Bart is completely dependent on his personal computer. A quick walk from home to school and Bart can gear up for a busy day of answering questions from colleagues and customers based on the west coast of the U.S eight hours behind London. But last year, Bart lost everything when the fast-spreading love bug virus bit him. And it's been a slow and tedious process getting things rebooted and the business up and running again. It's key for me to get a lot of things done during the day so that it arrives on people's desks first thing in the morning on the West Coast. So um, yeah, that's typically what's worked well for me. And, uh, um, and then not having it is, you know, it's just, uh, it's very constraining, you know, it's your, you know, it's, uh, it's frustrating. I think one of the problems is that everybody is using the same software. Everyone's using Microsoft Office, Microsoft Windows, Microsoft Outlook. So if you're a virus author, you know what to attack. You attack the homogenous environment, which everyone all around the world is using. And that way, viruses can spread very, very quickly. Here at Sophos in the Oxfordshire countryside, they've made a multi-million dollar business out of offering security to those dependent on computers. They've seen the worst havoc hackers can wreak, and they've learned who the people are behind the gratuitous damage. The average virus writer is, first of all, male. Girls don't seem to write viruses, they're into other things. But they're male, they're typically between 14 and 28. They call themselves names like the Dark Avenger, the Black Baron, Slarty Bartfast, Colostomy Bag Boy. So they create in this fantasy image of themselves. Eventually, they grow up, they, they think virus writing is less important, they get themselves a girlfriend, they stop writing viruses. There's a whole bunch of kids waiting to take their place. They're not necessarily all bad kids. They've got good relationships with computers, but they're not so good at social relationships. And I think they're not really thinking about the consequences of what they're doing with the virus. At Sophos, the systems are super bug-proof. They have to be. Their nerve center is built to military specification. No bugs or even a bomb can infiltrate their high-tech fortress. But it's not just about protecting business. Here at Janet Cert, they monitor computers for 300 academic institutions. At the moment, we're seeing probably a doubling every year. Uh, I think last year we were handling 130, 140 incidents a month. We're now over 300 a month, um, and we see no sign of that slowing down. At Sophos, they're always looking to the future, keeping a watch for the next bug and trying to stay one step ahead of virus spreaders. They preach proper computer hygiene to keep viruses out. Once a new virus is identified, Sophos will come up with software patches to block a specific bug. Antivirus software isn't perfect. It can detect the viruses it knows about, but not the ones it doesn't know about. It, it's rather like saying, oh, I've got a doctor, and that way I'm not going to catch a cold or the measles. You also have to take your own preventative measures. So we recommend people practice safe computing. One of the things you should do is avoid opening unsolicited attachments. If you receive an attachment you're not expecting in your email, don't just blindly open it because it could be a virus infection. After two full days of piecing his system back together, Bart Hutchinson has installed some cutting-edge antivirus software. 
He's learned his lesson the hard way, with 522 corrupted files. There, was, there were roughly 500, um, uh, I think the correct number that the antivirus software came up with was 522, um, of which then you had to go through and manually click on them, go to delete, and delete file, and you had to go through that um, 522 times. Viruses like these, far from being shadowy problems, present a real threat to businesses large and small. And for many like Bart Hutchinson, they've learned that prevention is far easier than the cure.